I think the first time that uh, people come across the word surd, they always find this a very strange uh, word. And, and yet its meaning is very simple and it's quite interesting to look at historically how this word uh, came about. We use the word surd when we're describing things like the square root of 8. Now, of course, we all know that the square root of 9 is 3. By the way, I hope that uh, none of you think that the square root of 9 could be plus or minus 3. The square root symbol uh, has one value only, and it's taken as a positive number. So this is an exact uh, answer. However, the square root of 8, if you punch this into the calculator, you'll get a, a long decimal. And uh, if you looked very carefully at that decimal, you would see that it doesn't repeat either. So it's not exact. And because it doesn't repeat, it's what we call uh, irrational. So the square root of 8 is an irrational number. It is a third. Now, people have been looking at these for quite a long time. If we go back to the time of Pythagoras, he was probably the first person with his school of mathematicians that looked at these. In the uh, about the 800s, 825, uh, an Arabic mathematician by the name of Al Khwarizmi, I hope that's the way you spell it, um, he was the first person to start giving these a name, and he actually called them silent numbers. Silent because they couldn't be exact, they couldn't express themselves as a whole number, as a fraction. And then in about 1150, I think it was, something like that, the name Surdus from the Latin came into play and eventually our modern word is Surd. So if you'd like to look up the history of these, uh, there's a lot of uh, fascinating stuff there to, to, to find out. Now, Surds are surprisingly useful in a number of ways. They are very convenient to avoid writing out lots of decimals. So the square root of 8, we know where we stand with that. OK, it's not exact, but we all know what it stands for. It can be simplified. We know that 8 is equal to 4 times 2. So the square root of 8 is the same as the square root of 4 times the square root of 2. The square root of 4 is, of course, exact. It is a rational number. And so that's twice the square root of 2. So we can write, then, the square root of 8 as equal to 2 times the square root of 2. What about the square root of 50? Again, it's not exact. We know what it stands for. We don't need to write it out as a decimal. Why? Well, because 50 is, of course, 25 times 2. So notice I'm always trying to find a square number, the largest square number, so that that square number multiplied by something else that isn't a square number gives me the number inside the square root. The square root of 25 is 5, so this time I have 5 times the square root of 2. So, if I was asked to add up the square root of 50 and the square root of 8, what would I do? Well, we, we know what a lot of us would do. We'd get the calculator out, we'd punch in some numbers, and we'd write a, a decimal answer. So, this enables us to uh, be a bit more sophisticated than that because I can write that as 5 root 2 plus 2 root 2, which of course is 7 root 2. So I've been able 
to simplify a calculation here using the properties of thirds and make it a much easier answer. I can do other things with these. I can multiply two thirds together. Now, I always think this is very clever. Square root of 8 is not exact. The square root of 2 is not exact. Multiply them together. I have the square root of 16. Well, we know what that is. It's 4. Now, this is a bit scary. We're getting into dangerous ground, I like to think, because here we're saying we've got these two silent numbers. They don't equal anything exact. But we multiply them together and we get an exact answer. I'll leave you thinking on that one. That's uh, worrying, isn't it? <laughs> and the same works with division. Square root of 8 divided by the square root of 2. Let's do the division first. 8 divided by 2, which of course is 4. And then the square root of 4 is 2. So really we're left uh, at this point with a big question, aren't we? What, what really are these thirds? What really are irrational numbers so that if I multiply two of them together, I can get an exact answer? And if I divide two of them, I can also get an exact answer. So let's have a look at this one. So solve x plus 2x equals 12. So what do you think you do first? Okay, well, I want x on its own. So I would put x equals 12 minus 2x. Okay, so a lot of the time we want to get x by itself. But what we want to do first is get all of these x's together. So can you see anything we can do with this? Get all these together in one place. Oh, okay, it's 3x, isn't it? Yeah, so absolutely. 3x equals 12. Oh, and so x equals 4. Brilliant, spot on, well done.